ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فهذا ايها الاخوه درسنا المتعلق بشرح الأربعين حديثا في الشخصية الإسلامية واليوم الحديث الثامن والثلاث وهو عن أبي سعيد الخدري قال قام فينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطيبا فكان من خطبته أن قال هذا فيه إشارة إلى أن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام كثيرا ما كان يخطب الصحابة في غير خطبة الجمعة بعض الناس أو كثير من الناس يظن أن خطبة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أو خطبه فقط في الجمعة وهذا غير صحيح أحيانا كان عليه الصلاة والسلام ينادي الصحابة الصلاة جامعة ثم يخطبهم وأحيانا كان ينادي بالمنبر فيقف عليه ثم يخطبهم صلى الله عليه وسلم قال فكان من خطبته ان قال الا اني اوشك ان ادعى فاجيب يقصد الموت والوفاه انك ميت وانهم ميتون بدليل قوله فيليكم عمال من بعد عمال يعني اناس مسؤولون في موضع المسؤوليه وموضع الرئاسه والاداره وما اشبه وطبعا الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام لا يقصد الصحابه فالصحابة رضي الله عنهم وبخاصة الخلفاء الراشدين الأربعة كانوا الطبقة العليا في الفضل وكانوا أعظم من وطئ الحصى بعد الأنبياء جميعا ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على وجه الخصوص فالكلام عن من بعدهم لما بدأ لما بدأت الروح الإسلامية تقل كما قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث الآخر ما من عام إلا والذي بعده شر من حتى تلقوا ربكم قال فيليكم عمال من بعد يقولون ما يعملون عفوا فيليكم عمال من بعد الكلام هنا عام عن الصحابه وغيرهم لكن بدا بذكر التفصيل المتعلق بالصحابه ثم ذكر من بعدهم قال فيليكم عمال من بعد يقولون ما يعلمون الصحابه رضي الله عنهم هم اجل الناس في هذا الباب وهم اعظم الناس في هذا الباب يعلمون فيقولون ويعملون بما يعرفون بمعنى انهم لا يعملون بالشيء الذي يجهلون وكيف يفعلون ذلك وهم الذين تربوا في مدرسه النبوه تحت عين رسول الاسلام عليه الصلاه والسلام قال وطاعه اولئك طاعه وطاعه اولئك طاعه لماذا؟ لانهم طائعون لله متبعون سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال فتلبثون كذلك دهرا يعني تستمرون على هذه الحال فترة من الزمان ثم يليكم عمال من بعدهم تأتي الآن كما ذكرنا وكما ورد عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث الذي أشرنا إليه ما من عام إلا والذي بعده شر منه حتى تلقوا ربكم يبدأ التقهقر و الاختلاف والترك لسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شيئا فشيئا قال ثم يليكم عمال من بعدهم يقولون ما لا يعلمون يقولون ما لا يعلمون يتكلمون بجهل ويعملون ما لا يعرفون يعملون أيضا بغير معرفة وبغير دراية فمن ناصحهم ووازرهم من ناصحهم قدم إليهم النصيحة وازرهم أي آزرهم و أخذ على أيديهم بما هم فيه أو شد على أعضادهم العضد هو أعلى الذراع والمقصود بذلك الموافقة فأولئك قد هلكوا وأهلكوا هلكوا في أصل مخالفتهم وأهلكوا في موافقتهم لهؤلاء المخالفين خالطوهم بأجسادكم هذا أمر لا يستطيعون غيره لا يستطيعون أن يتركوهم أو أن يبتعدوا عنهم فخالطوهم بأجسادكم وزايلوهم بأعمالكم أي فارقوهم بأعمالكم فلا توافقوهم على هم فيه مما خالفوا فيه شرع الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال واشهدوا على المحسن بأنه محسن وعلى المسيء 
بأنه مسيء هذه وظيفة الإنسان المسلم أن يشهد للمحسن بأنه محسن والمسيء بأنه مسيء وأن يناصح من استطاع مناصحته من أهل الطاعة ليزيده طاعة وأن يناصح من خالف الحق وشريعة الإسلام ممن خالف الحق وشريعة الإسلام بأن يردعه عما هو فيه طبعا كل ذلك ضمن شروط وضوابط واصول علمية النصيحة للحاكم غير النصيحة للمحكوم النصيحة للعالم غير النصيحة للجاهل النصيحة للولد غير النصيحة للوالد هذه كلها أمور دقائق يجب أن نتنبه إليها في هذا السياق والله تعالى أعلم والحديث رواه البيهقي في كتابه الزهد الكبير وسنده حسن نعم الشيخ said that the Sheikh said that this is the Hadith number 38 in this book 40 Hadith on the Islamic personality, and it is regarding commanding good and forbidding evil. This Hadith is, a, is on the authority of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiyallahu anhu, who said that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood up and started uh, giving up, giving a speech, giving a speech. The Sheikh said that uh, this is a hint. To the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to give sermons to the Sahaba, uh, other than the Friday sermon, other than the Friday speech, unlike what some people think that he was only giving speeches on Fridays, rather he alayhi salatu wasallam would give speeches on different occasions. Uh, sometimes they would uh, call; he would send a caller to call uh, that uh, gather together for salah. Then he will give them a speech. In other occasions, he would be on the member, on the pulpit, and then he would start uh, giving them a speech. So Rasulullah sallallahu stood up and gave a speech. Part of his speech was that he said, uh, Surely I am about to be called and I will answer that call. The Sheikh said here what he means والسلام, by him being called is death. As uh, in the Quran, surely you, Muhammad والسلام, will die, and they will die. And the proof that uh, this is what he meant is that he mentioned later on that there will be, uh, after this, that there will be after him, there will come rulers. So he's talking about him being called, that is, uh, and, and he will answer the fact that he will die. Uh, the hadith goes on to say, so. There will be uh, rulers or people uh, that will take charge of you, will be appointed uh, over you as rulers after me. They say what they know and they act upon that which they know. And the obedience to those is an obedience. The Sheikh said that here what is meant by that is the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, the Khulafa al-Rashidin, radiallahu anhum. They are uh, the ones who are described here. They, they know, uh, they say what they know and they act upon what they know. The obedience to them is an obedience and th these are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum for they are the ones who learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The hadith goes on to say, you will stay like that for some time. Then there will be people who will be in charge of you. There will be rulers who are in charge of you. They say what they do not know. And they act upon that which they do not know. So the one who gives them an advice and supports them or uh, agrees with them, then those they have surely, uh, they were destroyed and they destroyed others. They, they were destroyed them in themselves and uh, they destroyed the others. Uh, here, <clears throat> the Sheikh said that those rulers who come later on, he said like what was mentioned uh, in the Hadith, which says that uh, what means that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said that there will be no year except that the following year will be worse than it. There, there is no year that, except that the following year will be worse than it. Meaning, meaning the uh, situation of the Muslims 
and their uh, practice of Islam and the Islamic spirit will uh, will go down gradually. Gradually, it will go down. So these types of rulers are the ones who will be ruling uh, them. So the one who advises them, supports them, or agrees uh, uh, with them, uh, advises them here like uh, agreeing with what they are doing, not like a good advice, but you know agreeing with what they are doing, then those are destroyed within themselves and they have destroyed others. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uh, then he said alayhi salatu wassalam mingle with them by your bodies and abandon them or stay away from them with your actions here the sheikh said that uh, regarding mingle with them mix with them by your bodies mingle with them by your bodies because they cannot do anything but that they cannot uh, be away from them so they mingle with them, you mingle with them with your bodies, but then in terms of actions, do not agree with them in what uh, they oppose the Sunnah, regarding what they have, uh, they are opposing uh, the Sunnah. So mingle with them with your bodies and stay away from them by your actions and testify to the one who has done good, uh, to the doer of good that he is doing good and testify against the one who is doing evil that he has done evil. The Sheikh said that this is the duty of the Muslim, is to testify and be a witness, to testify to the doers of good that they are doing good, and to testify against the doers of evil that they are doing things that are evil. The believer commands good and forbids evil, and the believer also advises others but then this advice and this commanding good and forbid forbidden of evil is uh, conditioned uh, and it has rules and regulations so for instance the advice that is given to the ruler is not like the advice that is given to uh, others who are less in status than him the advice that is given to the father is not like the advice that uh, is given to the children and, and the likes uh, and the likes of that. As for the hadith, it is narrated by an Imam uh, Al Bayhaqi and it is uh, Hassan uh, Hadith. Uh, narrated by Imam Al Bayhaqi in his book Al Zuhd Al Kabir, uh, and it is with an authentic chain. قال وهو عام في الناس جميعا أي أحكام هذا الحديث عامة. في الناس جميعا حكاما ومحكومين أحبابا وأعداء كما ذكرنا أن لكل من أنواع المنصوحين طريقة في النصح لا يسوى بين الناس جميعا بأن يقال الكبير والصغير سواء الأمير والمأمور سواء لابد أن يكون هناك مراعاة في الخطاب لكل على حسب ما وردت به الشريعة قال فلا تمنعه منه هيبة بعض الناس قد يكون يرى, يرى واحدا مثلا ذا مكان في مجتمعه أو في قبيلته أو ما أشبه ويراه على منكر فيخاف بسبب هيبته إذا كان لا يستطيع لا يكلفه الله أما إذا كان يستطيع لكن الهيبة تمنعه فهذا لا شك أنه يكون محاسبا على تقصيره قال ولا تحجبه عنه رفقة بعض الناس يقول لك هذا صديقي كيف أنصحه صديقك أولى الناس أن تنصحه لذلك قيل قديما صديقك من صدقك لا من صدقك صديقك من صدقك في نصحه في تذكيره في بيانه لا من صدقك ووافقك على كل ما تقول سواء كان ذلك خطرا أو صوابا قال بل يؤدي هذا الواجب دون ما خوف أو وجل إلا من الله عز وجل ولقد قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ما من قوم يعمل فيهم بالمعاصي هم أعز ممن يعملها أعز أي أقوى وأثبت قدما عندنا مجتمع في ناس يفعلون المعاصي في ناس مبرؤون من ذلك والله الحمد 
وهؤلاء المبرؤون اقوى من اولئك قال ثم لا يغيرون ذلك الا عمهم الله بعقاب من فالعقاب يشمل اهل المعاصي حينئذ ويشمل ممن هم اعز منهم وممن هم اقدر منهم ثم لم ينكروا عليهم ثم لم ينكروا عليهم قال وتامل رحمك الله قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا الحديث هم اعز ممن يعملها ففيه لفتة غالية إلى قضية الاستطاعة في إنكار المنكر وأنه مموط بها أي مرتبط بها لكن على درجات لا درجة واحدة كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث الذي رواه الإمام مسلم وغيره من رأى منكم منكرا فليغير بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان الناس درجات وبالتالي التصرفات الصادرة عن هؤلاء الناس تكون على حسب تلك الدرجات سواء بسواء قال والمسلم في تذكيره لإخوانه وأمره لهم بالمعروف ونهيه اليوم عن المنكر حذر من الخلاف وهذا هو الحديث التاسع والثلاث Commenting on this hadith the sheikh said that this is general commanding good and forbidding evil this is general it includes all kinds of people whether they are rulers or being ruled, whether they are um, beloved ones or they are enemies and so on and so forth. So the, uh, the, this ruling is general for uh, everybody. Um, the Sheikh said that, <coughs> uh, but then for each type of group that you are advising, there is an advice that is suitable for them. So there is an advice that suits the older ones, there is an advice that suits the younger ones, and so on and so forth. Uh, the Sheikh went on to say, the believer uh, should command good and forbid evil. Nothing should prevent him uh, from this. So the fear of others should not prevent him from doing that, from commanding good and forbidding evil. The Sheikh said that sometimes the one of us might see someone who has a status and position in the society or in the or in his tribe and he sees that he is committing an evil uh, so he doesn't he fears to advise him because of that fearful type of respect that that person uh, has now if one is unable to command good and forbid evil then he is not to be uh, held accountable for that but then if uh, he is able to advise that person to command good and forbid evil, yet he only feared him because of the position and the status that he has, then one will be accountable for that. Uh, the Sheikh went on to say that also uh, company or companionship should not bar him from commanding uh, good and forbidden evil because uh, you should do this uh, to everybody included including your friends as uh, the Sheikh mentioned a statement <coughs> that says your true friend is the one who speaks the truth to you he is not the one that only shows <coughs> agreement with you your true friend is the one who advises you if he sees something wrong he will advise you not the one who just agrees with you for whatever you say whether it was right or it was wrong uh, so the believer he will perform he will carry out the duty of commanding good and forbidding evil without uh, fear except from Allah Azza wa Jal um, uh, then the Sheikh mentioned the hadith which says uh, from him alayhi salatu was salam there are no people whom evils or sins are committed within them and uh, sins are committed within them and they are you know this is a group of people some of them are committing sins and then the rest of them are not committing the sins and they are mightier and stronger than those who are committing the sins so you have the people some of them are committing sins the rest of them are stronger than those who are committing the sins. Then those, they don't change it, those rest of them who 
are stronger and able to change then they don't change it except that Allah will send will send a punishment that will uh, cover all of them that will cover all of them those who are committing the sins will be touched by the punishment and those who are able to stop it but then they are not doing anything they will also be punished <coughs> along with uh, them uh, the Sheikh said here that uh, uh, consider may Allah have mercy on you the statement of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith describing those who are not committing the sins saying about them that they are stronger and mightier than those who are committing the sins the sheikh said in this there is a uh, precious hint there is a precious uh, a precious hint to the issue of ability to the issue of ability regarding uh, forbidding the evil and that forbidding the evil is linked uh, to the ability or uh, conditioned by being able to uh, to uh, to do it uh, but then uh, it is upon not one level or one degree but then upon different or various levels and uh, degrees the hadith then uh, the sheikh mentioned the hadith in Sahih Muslim uh, and other than him which says what means uh, the one who as uh, the one uh, amongst you who sees an evil then let him change it by his hand if he cannot let him change it by his tongue and if he cannot then let him change it alhamdulillah by his heart and that is the weakest of faith that is the weakest of faith the sheikh then said that the muslim when he is reminding his brothers ordering them to do good and forbidding them from uh, doing evil uh, he is very cautious uh, of uh, this agreement he is very cautious of uh, this agreement and this is the hadith number 39 قال عن جابر بن عبد الله قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الشيطان قد أيس أن يعبده المصلون في جزيرة العرب ولكن في التحريش بينهم إن الشيطان قد أيس يعني يأس وقطع الأمل وهذه تسمى في اللغة العربية الألفاظ المقلوبة أيس ويأس جبذ وجذب وهكذا كلمة يعني تنعكس بعض حروفها والمعنى يكون مؤدى نفسه قد يأس أن يعبده أن يعبده المصلون في جزيرة العرب أي أن يعبدوه كلهم وإلا فقد أخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أن جزيرة العرب كان فيها وسيرجع إليها شيء من عبادة الشيطان وعبادة الأصنام والعياذ بالله تعالى حتى أخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام عن اضطراب أليات بني دوس عند ذي الخلصة وهو من كبار الأصنام التي كانت في الجاهلية وأن ذلك سيرجع في آخر الزمان لأنه هذا الحديث استدل به البعض على نفي المظاهر الشركية في جزيرة العرب وبالتالي الذين يستغيثون بغير الله يقولون طالما نحن في جزيرة العرب إذا هذه ليست عبادة غير الله لأن الشيطان يأيس أن يعبده المصلون في جزيرة العرب هذا طبعا دليل غير الاستدلال به غير جيد وإنما الحديث يفهم على المصلين جميعا وليس على فئة منهم بدليل الحديث الآخر وبدليل الواقع الذي فيه في بعض الأمكنة والأزمنة استغاثة بغير الله وطلب المدد من دون الله وما أشبه قال ولكن في التحريش بينهم التحريش بينهم أي إثارة الفتن والقلاقل التحريش هو التفريق والتشتيت والعياذ بالله تعالى والحديث رواه مسلم قال فرب كلمة يطلقها من لا يدري إنسان لا يعلم ربما يقول كلمة هكذا يفلت فيها لسانه على عبد من عباد الله غلط واخطا ممكن انسان يخطئ يخطئ اخوك صاحبك صديقك جارك لكن اذا اردت ان تقومه اولا يجب عليك ان تكون ممن تدري لا ان تكون مما لا تدري لان اول شرط من شروط الامر المعروف عن المنكر هو العلم العلم بما تامر به والعلم بما تنهى عنه اما ياتي انسان ويامر او ينهى بما لا يعلم فهذا لا يجوز قال فرب كلمة يطلقها من لا يدري 
يفلت بها فيها لسانه على عبد من عباد الله غلط واخطا تشعل نارا متأججة في قلوب الإخوة فتفسد المحبة وتذهب المودة لا يفهم أحد أن في هذا نفيا أو نهيا عن التخطئة أو عن الأمر بالمعروف أو عن النهي عن المنكر أو عن أن يقال المخطئ أنت مخطئ لا بل هذا كما ذكرنا ونكرر أصل من أصول الشريعة الأمر والنهي والبيان وما يشبه ولكن ينبغي أن يكون ذلك كما يقال بالتي هي أحسن للتي هي أقوم أما أن يكون هنالك شدة وغلظة وإطلاق الألفاظ الشديدة العسرة الصعبة على أي مخطئ دون النظر في مناصحته دون النظر في حاله وحالته هذا لا يجوز بل هذا مخالف للحقيقة البشرية التي أخبر بها النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه من منا يحب أن يغلظ عليه الآخرون لا أحد فما بالنا نغلظ على الآخرين كما ذكرنا الرفق له مكانه والشدة لها مكانه لكن ما هو الأصل الرفق الرفق أما أن نقلب الصورة ونعكس القضية بأن نجعل الأصل الشدة والأصل العنف هذا خلاف ما عليه رسول الاسلام عليه الصلاه والسلام وخلاف ما ارشد عليه ائمه الدين وذكرنا لكم قبلا كلمه الشيخ الامام عبد العزيز بن باز رحمه الله لما قال ان هذا الزمان زمان الرفق ان هذا الزمان زمان الرفق ليش؟ لان القلوب ضعيفه والشبه خطافه والايمان في الناس قليل والعمل الصالح نادر فيجب أن نكون أعوانا للناس على شياطينهم لا أعوانا للشيطان على إخواننا هكذا تتحقق الأخوة وهكذا نغلق باب الشيطان في التحريش بين المصلين وهو الشيء الذي رضي به وهو الذي أنس به وهو الشيء الذي رأى أثاره قال وهذا هو أعز ما يريده الشيطان فبه يسر وإليه يفرح بل جاء في بعض الروايات أن الشيطان ينصب عرشه على الماء ويرسل جلوده ويرسل جلوده فإذا رجع الجنود سألهم ماذا فعلت أنت وماذا فعلت أنت فإذا به يقول الواحد أنا فرقت بين فلان وزوجته أو بين فلانة وزوجها قال أنت صاحب العرش أنت صاحب العرش وهذا من صور التفريق التفريق بين الأخوة التفريق بين الأزواج التفريق بين الأباء والأبناء هذا كله داخل في باب التحريش بين المصلين قال وهذا الذي أشرت إليه واقع لا ريب واقع ما له من دافع تفريق وتشتيت وتحريش واختلاف نرى الناس في المسجد الواحد قد لا يسلم الواحد على أخيه قد لا يشاركه في واجبات حقوق المسلم على أخيه هذا هو عين ما يبتغيه الشيطان ويريده قال وهذا الذي أشرت إليه واقع لا ريب حاصل لا محالة وهو يؤدي إلى شر مستطير وخطر جسيم وإذ الأمر كذلك فما هو المخرج من فتن الناس هذا هو الحديث الأربعون وبه ختام الأربعين حديثا وسنذكر ذلك بعد الترجمة Hadith number 39, the title of it, that the Muslim is cautious uh, from uh, 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 regarding this agreement. From the Hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, who said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Surely the shaitan has despaired that the, those who pray will worship him in the Arabian Peninsula. The Shaykh uh, first commented on the word, Ayisa in the Arabic language, which means to despair. He said it's like exactly like the word Ya'isa, it also means to despair. And these are words in the Arabic language. Uh, the letters may be switched, but the meaning is the same. He mentioned another word, Jadada and Jabada, it means to pull, although the, the letters are switched, but then it has or it carries the same meaning. Here Rasulullah said that the shaitan has despaired 
that those who pray, uh, praying people, uh, will worship him in the Arabian Peninsula. What is meant here is that uh, not all the praying people, but uh, that uh, he said here that the um, the shaitan has despaired that the praying people uh, will worship him in the Arabian uh, Peninsula. Uh, the Sheikh uh, said here that uh, this is speaking about uh, in general. Otherwise, before the coming of Islam, during the Jahiliyyah, there were uh, people who used to worship idols. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also informed us that uh, in the future, and after Islam, there will come people who will <laughs> worship the idols, will start worshiping the idols again. And he mentioned the authentic hadith, which mentions that the uh, behinds of the people of those will shake around the idol called the Khulasa. This is a, a, an idol that used to be worshipped before Islam, and then towards the end of time, people in the Arabian Peninsula will go back to worshipping uh, that idol as they used to do uh, in the uh, pre-Islamic era, the time of Jahili. Now, uh, the Sheikh said here then that the Shaitan has despaired that the praying people uh, will worship him uh, in uh, the Arabian Peninsula, meaning that he has despaired that each and every praying pers person uh, will worship him. Meaning, it could be that others will, will do that. But he has despaired that each and every one will worship him. He is completely despaired from that. The Sheikh said, we are saying this because there are people uh, nowadays who could be in the Arabian Peninsula and they are worshipping other than Allah by uh, seeking rescue from other than Allah, invoking other than Allah and asking of other than Allah. If they are told that this is shirk, why are you doing this? They say, well, the shaitan has despaired to be worshipped by the praying people. And this, they are mixing up things and they are using the hadith in the wrong way to defend themselves and the shirk that they are doing. What it, what me, what it means here that the shaitan has despaired that each and every one of the praying people will uh, worship him. Uh, but then, uh, if some of them do and some uh, don't, uh, then that's that's something that uh, he didn't despair of that. Some will, will, will still continue to follow his footsteps. Uh, so, the shaitan has despaired that the praying people will uh, worship him in the Arabian Peninsula, but uh, an exception here is made, that, but he did not despair from instigating or provoking uh, fights and divisions between them. He still always has hopes in causing dissension and animosity between the believers. This is a hadith that is narrated by uh, Al Imam Muslim. The Shaykh commented on this hadith by saying, How many of a word that uh, someone who doesn't know will uh, utter, will say, and uh, it will slip from his tongue against one of the servants of Allah who committed something wrong or a mistake. But then that word that slips from his tongue will kindle or will start a fire that will uh, burn the heart or that will blaze, that the fire that is burning in the hearts of the brothers. So it corrupts, it corrupts the love and it makes the uh, love and the affection uh, in the hearts of the believers go, uh, go away. <coughs> so the Sheikh said that someone would mention a word, would utter a word, it would slip from his tongue uh, and uh, this person, he will be someone who doesn't know, who doesn't have understanding because commanding good and forbidding evil, the Sheikh said, has terms and conditions and the first one of them is that for you to know what you are commanding and what you are forbidding. Otherwise, if you don't know, if you, you, you are ignorant of that, then you should not be ordering and forbidding. 
the Sheikh goes on to say that after mentioning that the uh, uh, love between the brothers will vanish, he said, and this is the, the most or the dearest thing that the shaitan wants. He becomes very happy and pleased when uh, that happens. Uh, and this, what uh, the Sheikh commented on, on this also, saying that uh, we should not, or no one should understand from what we said, that we are saying, don't mention uh, if someone else committed a mistake. We're not saying don't correct his mistake. We're not saying don't command and don't forbid and don't clarify. Rather, this is one of the foundations and the principles of the Sharia. But then, this commanding good and forbidding evil, it, it should be done with that which is best and should be leading with, to that which is most correct. Uh, it should be done with that which is best, the best way, the best method, and it should lead to that which is most straight. But then, uh, using harsh words, using harsh words without looking to the conditions of the people, uh, then uh, this will uh, go against even the human nature. Using the harshness, we go against the human nature. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself." And who amongst us would love to be treated with harshness? Uh, uh, of course, none of us would be uh, in, in, in interested in that. So we mentioned before the Sheikh said that the principle or the foundation is to use gentleness to use gentleness and leniency but harshness can be used but it will be used uh, only uh, sometimes and in the cases where uh, using it is, 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 is the correct way and he reminded us of what he mentioned before of the statement of Al Imam Ibn Baz who said that our time is the time of gentle, gentleness and leniency. The Sheikh said this is because the hearts are weak and the misconceptions or the doubts snatch away the people. The faith, Iman is weak and uh, righteous actions are rare. So we should be uh, helping, we should be a means to help our brothers to uh, become more steadfast. We should not be uh, going against them and helping them to follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Um, the Sheikh said regarding uh, uh, that uh, this is uh, what pleases the shaitan or makes him happy. He said that there was uh, there is a narration from the Prophet وسلم, that says that the shaitan sets up his throne on water and then he sends his soldiers. He sends those uh, smaller shaitans, his sh soldiers, he will send them around and then they will go trying to make trouble, provoke dissension between the people and then they come back to him and he starts asking each one of them what did you do and what did you do and what did you do? So some of them will, will, will say I uh, did this and that uh, and the other one I did this and that until someone of them will say, I did not leave so and so, I did not leave him until I separated between him and his wife. So uh, the shaitan then becomes very happy with that person, with that shaitan who caused the division between the man and his wife and he will say you are uh, the best or you are the one who deserves uh, the throne. Uh, so uh, causing division between the spouses and between fathers and sons and the likes of that this is something that is very pleasing to the shaitan and it makes him very happy the sheikh said that what i hinted to here what i brought the attention to here is a reality without any doubt i mean this dissension this hatred and divisions between the believers is happening without any doubt because you see in the same masjid you find one brother not giving salam, not exchanging salam with the other brother. Uh, he does not fulfill the right of his Muslim brother while they are in the same masjid and praying in the same uh, place. Uh, the Sheikh said that this uh, condition, 
the division or hatred and animosity between the believers. This leads to a, uh, a great evil and also it is very dangerous. And since the, the affair is like that, then what is the way out of trials? What is the exit from these turmoils or temptations? This is the title of the next hadith, which is the last hadith, hadith number 40. قال عن عبد الله بن مسعود قال كيف أنتم إذا لبستكم فتنة ابن مسعود يخاطب الصحابة ولعله معهم بعض من التابعين فالتابعي من أدرك الصحابة رضي الله عنهم كيف أنتم إذا لبستكم فتنة يحذرهم بصورة الاستفهام كيف ستفعلون كيف ستكونون ماذا ستصنعون كيف أنتم إذا لبستكم فتنة أي سيطرت عليكم ولا يقصد هنا بالفتنة فتنة معينة ولكن أي فتنة قد تندرج تحتها صور كثيرة متعددة يربو فيها الصغير يربو فيها الصغير أن ينشأ ويهرم فيها الكبير الكبير يصبح عجوزا هرما وهذه الفتنة موجودة في الناس مسيطرة عليهم إذا ترك منها شيء قيل تركت السنة مع أنها في الحقيقة فتنة لكن لأنها سيطرت على الناس ورمى فيها الصغير وهرم فيها الكبير فألفوها وعايشوها فصارت كما يقال كأنها جزء لا يتجزأ من حياتهم فحسبوها سنة وهي في الحقيقة فتنة إذا ترك منها شيء قيل تركت السنة يقول لهم كيف تفعلون والحال هكذا ماذا قالوا قالوا ومتى ذاك يا أبا عبد الرحمن لا يسألون الآن عن الزمان المجرد ممكن أن يقول لهم بعد خمسين سنة أو مئة سنة أو كذا ماذا استفادوا ومتى ذاك أي كيف يكون هذا الواقع وما صورته فقال لهم رضي الله عنه إذا ذهبت علماؤكم أول شيء إذا ذهبت علماؤكم إذا أن تتحول الفتن في الناس إلى سنن هذا له أسباب أولها أو من أهمها إذا ذهبت علماؤكم إذا ذهبت علماء من الذي يبقى في الناس من الذي يبين لهم الحق من الذي ينكر عليهم المنكر من الذي ينشر وينصر فيهم السنة وكثرت جهالكم هذا هو الشيء الطبيعي قل جاء الحق ذلك الباطل إذا ذهب العلماء لم يبقى إلى الجهلاء وكثرت قراؤكم القارئ هو عكس الأمي الذي لا يقرأ ونرى في هذا الزمان الآن بل منذ أزمان أن نسبة الأمية في بعض البلاد تكاد تكون صفرا بل في أكثر البلاد وفي بلاد قليلة وقليلة جدا بينما هذا لم يكن موجودا في زمان الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام وبخاصة أن أمته أمة أمية حين البعثة الشريفة للنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال وقلت فقهاؤكم صار هناك قراء لكن من غير فقه ما فائدة أن تقرأ ولكن من غير فقه وأن تحمل الكتب من غير دراية وتنبه وكثرة مراوكم تفرق المسلمون شيعا وأحزابا هذا أمير وهذا أمير وهذا رئيس وهذا مسؤول هذا أيضا من هذه العلامات وإن كان هنا كلمة لابد من ذكرها وهي أن هذا التفرق إما أن يكون تفرقا في عامة المسلمين أو أن يكون تفرقا في أولياء أمورهم إذا كان تفرقا في عامة المسلمين فهذا هو التحزب بعينه أما إذا كان التفرق في أولياء الأمور فقد ذكر شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية والصنعاني والشوكاني وغيره أن الأمة الإسلامية من جهة أولياء أمورها تفرقت إلى دول شتى على رأس كل دولة سلطان من فجر الإسلام الدولة الأموية والدولة العباسية ودولة المرابطين ودولة الموحدين كلها في نفس الوقت وكلها في نفس الزمان لكن هذا يحكم شعبه وأمته ومواطنيه وذاك يحكم شعبه وأمته ومواطنيه 
هذا لا يبغي على هذا وهذا لا يبغي على هذا هذا له طاعة شعبه بالمعروف نقول هذا لأن بعض الناس قد يتربص ويتصيد في مثل هذه الكلمات المجملة فيطير بها على غير وجهها ويطيرها كل مطار فنحن نبين ذلك على وجه الحق والتحقيق إن شاء الله تعالى قال وقلت أمناؤكم أصبح الأمين قليلا في الناس وأصبح الائتمان قليلا في الناس وإذا ذهب الائتمان والأمن ماذا ماذا يحل مكانه؟ يحل الخلل ويحل الخيانة ويحل الزلل قال والتمست الدنيا بعمل الآخرة أي أصبح هنالك أناس يلتمسون الدنيا ويطلبونها لكن تحت صورة التعبد وتحت صورة الدار الآخرة كما هو الآن أحوال كثيرين وللأسف الشديد من الذين يصطنعون المشيخة في الرقية والرقاة وما يسمى أحيانا بالطب النبوي وكثير من ذلك دجل وخرافة وشعوذة ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان واليوم خرج علينا أناس يتوسعون في الرؤى والأحلام والمنامات فأصبح كثير من الناس يعيش كأنما هو على سيطرة الرؤى يقول لك رأيت الليل كذا إذا نافع اليوم كذا هذا غلط قبيح وقبيح جدا وللأسف بعض أضعياء المشيخة يعينونهم على هذا الوهم يعينونهم على هذا الباطل هذا لا يجوز نعم نحن لا ننكر الطب النبوي ولكن من أهل العلم من أهل السنة من أهل الاختصاص ولا ننكر تفسير الأحلام هذا أيضا من أهل العلم من أهل الاختصاص وهكذا لكن هذا في دون دون ما الاختصاص المذكور فإنه يكون من باب التماس الدنيا بعمل الآخرة وتفقها لغير الدين تفقها للتصدر تفقها تفقها للوجاهة تفقها لأن يقال فلان فقيه كما أخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أن النار أول ما تسعر تسعر في ثلاثة نفر عالم ومجاهد ومنفق فيسألهم الله وهو به يعلم يسأل المجاهد يسأل العالم فيما علمت قال علمت في سبيلك تعلمت العلم في سبيلك وابتغاء مرضاتك قال كذبت تعلمت العلم يقال عالم وقد قيل ألقوه في جهنم فيلقى في جهنم وهكذا يفعل في المجاهد ويفعل في المنفق لذلك قال الشاعر قديما وعالم بعلمه لم يعمل معذب من قبل عباد الوثن لماذا؟ لأن هذا العالم يلبس على الناس دينه هذا المقصود من قوله عليه من قوله رضي الله عنه تفقه لغير الدين تفقه للدنيا تفقه للتصدر تفقه ليقال ويشار إلى فلان وعلان وهذا الأخر رواه الدارمي وقال شيخنا الشيخ الألباني رحمه الله وهو مما صح عن ابن مسعود موقوفا وهو مرفوع إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حكما يعني وإن كان هذا من قول ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه لكن هذا كأنه قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأنه يتكلم عما يستقبل من الغيب وما يستقبل من الغيب لا يعلمه إلا الله أو أوحى به إلى رسوله الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام من هنا قال هو مرفوع حكما والله تعالى أعلم Uh, this is a statement from Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, عنه, the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he said, this is the statement of Ibn Mas'ud, عنه, he said, how will you be? This is now Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, عنه, speaking to the Sahaba, and maybe also some of the Tabi'een, who are the second generation of Muslims, those who uh, uh, saw the Sahaba. عنه. He says uh, to them, how will you be? Meaning, what, what, what kind of actions will you do? If a fitna, if a confusion uh, has befallen you, a confusion has befallen you, uh, here the Sheikh said that he does not mean a specific, uh, a specific type of fitna, but 
it is a fitna, a test or an examination or a confusion, a turmoil that will happen in general. What will you do if you are uh, in a turmoil? The Sheikh said, uh, the, the, the statement goes on to say that the young will grow up doing it upon that fitna. It is a fitna, then they think it is sunnah. Uh, and the old, he will grow even older uh, within uh, that uh, uh, fitna or that uh, uh, turmoil. So the Sheikh said that they think that this is a sunnah, while it is not. It is actually the opposite. But then because they grew up seeing that and doing that, then they, become, they became very much accustomed and used to it. To a point that they, uh, the narration goes on to say, if something was left from that, it will be said the sunnah was abandoned. When it is actually a fitna. But then if some, uh, something was left, they will say, well, the sunnah was uh, abandoned. So he's telling them, what are you going to do in conditions like these? So they asked, when is that going to be? Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman. The Sheikh said that they're not asking uh, about the time exactly like in years, like after 50 years or so. But rather they are asking about the conditions uh, of the time or the description of the time when it will happen. So he answered uh, saying that that will happen, this uh, <coughs> trial, this trial that the people will think it is Sunnah, this trial will happen when the ulama, the scholars, will vanish, will go away. Uh, the Sheikh said that the scholars are the ones who teach the Sunnah, they are the ones who command good and forbid uh, evil. So if the uh, scholars vanish, then no one will be doing that. The next point is, he said, and your, the ignorant amongst you have become a lot. And this is like uh, something that is, uh, uh, succeeds naturally from the fact that there are no scholars. When there are no scholars, then there will be a lot of ignorant uh, people. Uh, then uh, Ibn Mas'ud said that those who read amongst you Will be uh, will be many. Uh, those who are uh, who, who are able to uh, uh, read and write amongst you are are many. Uh, here the sheikh said that this is something that is widespread to a point that in some countries those people who are unlettered, those who people who could not read or write, are very are very few in number. So those who, are, who could read, there are so many. But then the next point says, and those who understand, those who are uh, understanding, those who have possess understanding, they are very few. So although the people are able to read, uh, they have access to knowledge, but then they are uh, actually people without understanding and without comprehension. So in this case, the Sheikh said, uh, how does it benefit them that they are able to read when they are not comprehending and are not understanding? The next point is, and the time when the leaders or the rulers uh, who are ruling you will be many. The Sheikh said that here, this is uh, basically talking about a lot of rulers and a lot of leaders. Uh, so the, the Muslims will divide and they will have so many people leading them. The Sheikh said that I would like to uh, comment on this point here, saying that the division is of two types. The division within the general folks of the Muslims, and this will happen by uh, party partisanship. The general folks of the Muslims, they divide into different groups, and uh, every group will have their own thing, so uh, they, will they will divide into groups and party, having the party, the, the party spirit, having the party spirit. So this is a division in the general folks of the Muslims. There is another division, and that is the division in terms of leaders, uh, having so many leaders at the same time. Uh, the Sheikh said that, however, I would like to mention about the division when uh, Muslims have so many leaders, 
I would like to mention the fact that Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, and al-Shawkani and al-Sanani, they mentioned that the Muslim Ummah, in terms of uh, countries or states, they have uh, divided uh, in, very, in a time that is very early in Islam uh, to different uh, countries or different states, and every state has its own ruler or leader, like uh, the Abbasi, uh, the Abbasi uh, uh, state or the uh, uh, Amawi state, the uh, Murabitin and others. Uh, each, uh, each country or each state uh, and each leader or ruler had his uh, people and has uh, their citizens and they were, uh, you know, uh, ruling uh, them. So this is something that uh, has happened uh, uh, sometime uh, early in Islam and the Sheikh said that I wanted to mention this so that no one will misunderstand or throw uh, any kind of uh, accusation that this is something that has happened uh, in a very, a, a very early stage in Islam. Uh, the next point says that the time when those who are trustworthy amongst you will be very few in number, meaning uh, betrayal and cheating will be widespread, and a time when the worldly pleasures are sought by the actions of the next life, by the actions of the next life. Uh, the Sheikh here said that uh, he is describing a group of people who are actually seeking the worldly pleasures, seeking wealth and money, but under the guise of worship, under the guise of worship. So uh, the Sheikh mentioned as an example, uh, those people who claim to be sheikhs, <coughs> sheikhs who perform uh, ruqya, or that they are raqi, or uh, sheikhs who claim to uh, have knowledge of the prophetic medicine, uh, while in fact those people who claim that they heal others through uh, dua and uh, dhikr, or through the herbs and the prophetic medicine, while they are people who have no knowledge, uh, they are people who just forge lies and make up things and uh, mislead the people, basically. Others, uh, they claim to have specialized in terms of um, uh, explaining dreams, explaining dreams, and therefore they got very much involved into that without knowledge to a point that some people, they are now uh, being controlled by those dreams, and every time they see a dream, they uh, go to these people and ask them for the interpretation and the likes of that, meaning just basically people who follow myths and they do not follow the truth. Uh, the Sheikh said that we do not deny that there is uh, prophetic medicine, uh, but then that is uh, the people of knowledge are the ones who know that, and also there is interpretation, true interpretation of the dreams, and also people of knowledge who are specialized in this field, they know uh, how to do this, but then he is warning against the so many claimants, so many claimants of uh, ability uh, to do these things while they are completely uh, ignorant and they are following whims and desires and uh, myths. Uh, the last piece, if the, the uh, religious knowledge, if the legal knowledge was sought for other than uh, the religion. Uh, the Sheikh said here that these are people, this is a time when there will be people who try to, 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 try to learn the legal knowledge, al-ilm al-shari, but then they only want, they want status and position. And so that they will be pointed at and it will be said, oh, fulan is a jurist or he is someone who is specialized in the legal uh, knowledge. Then the Sheikh mentioned the famous hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned three people that the, they will be the first who will be thrown in the fire uh, a, a scholar and a, a warrior in Mujahid and also someone who gave uh, charity. So this scholar will be brought uh, and Allah will ask him why did you seek the knowledge and he will say I sought the knowledge for your sake and Allah will tell him, you lied, rather you sought the legal knowledge in order for the people to say about you that you are a scholar and the people have already said that and then he will order 
that this person will be thrown in the fire and likewise the same thing will be done to the mujahid and to the one who gives uh, charity this is why the sheikh said that there is a line of poetry that says what means a scholar who does not act upon his knowledge he will be tormented before the worshippers of the idols why the sheikh said why uh, that is because he is confusing uh, the people and misleading the people regarding their religion this uh, statement of ibn mas'ud is narrated by an imam uh, at darimi and uh, it is authentic uh, an authentic statement of abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu an however sheikh al albani rahimahullah said about this that this is something this is a statement that is authentic from the statements of Ibn Mas'ud but then it has the same ruling as the ruling of a hadith or a statement that is mentioned by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself that is because this statement of Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an speaks about something that will happen in the future and this is part of the knowledge of the uh, unseen or the hidden knowledge from us that cannot be attained by Ibn Mas'ud except uh, through the revelation so he must have uh, attained this from the revelation that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad so although it is a statement of Ibn Mas'ud but it has the same ruling as if it is a statement of the Prophet ولما كان عنوان الحديث الأربعين المخرج من فتن الناس كان التعليق كالتالي إن المخرج هو القدوة القدوة هي التأسي أن يكون إنسان ما هو المثل الذي يتبعه الناس من المثل الذي يتبعه الناس في ديننا لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة نعم إن الاقتداء برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لهو أعظم مخرج من الفتن المحيطة بنا فتن الشهوات والشبهات وأعظم مشعل يهدينا في ظلمات الجهل المذلهمة يخرجنا من الظلمات إلى النور فبمعرفة سنته عليه الصلاة والسلام ينكشف البهرج البهرج هو الزخارف التي لا فائدة منها ولا جدوى من ورائها وينفضح الزغل أيضا يظهر الشيء المختبئ مما ظاهره في الرحمة وباطنه من قبله العذاب وترجع الأمور إلى مواضعها وتتضح المعالم المخفية كما ذكر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في حديث آخر إذا وسد الأمر إلى غير أهله فانتظر الساعة فإذا كان كل شيء في مكانه وفي نصابه فهذا لا شك من علامات الخيرية في هذه الأمة قال فلا مجال لمتعالم ولا موضع لحسود ولا ولا محل لجريء ولا كلام لمتشدق الجريء هو الجريء على الباطل ليس المقصود الجريء على الحق ولا كلام لمتشدق هو الذي يتفاصح بالقول يتفاصح بالبيان وهو خلي من العلم خاول من الفقه في الدين قال فالسنة نور يهدي فمن علمها فقد حصل خيرا كثيرا ومن جهلها أدرك شرا وفيرا نسأل الله العافية الله عز وجل يقول في القرآن الكريم فإن تطيعوا تهتدوا فربط الهداية في طاعة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فإذا لم يكن ثم تطاع ماذا ستكون النتيجة ستكون النتيجة ضلالا ويضلال قال فالله الله عباد الله تعلموا واعملوا واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون هذا إخواني شرح آخر حديث من هذه الحديث الأربعين وأما الخاتمة نسأل الله عز وجل أن يرزقنا وإياكم مسلم الخاتمة فقلت إن الشخصية الإسلامية شخصية متميزة لحمتها الكتاب وسداها السنة إيش اللحمة والسدا هي الخيوط التي يتشكل منها القماش الخيوط الطولية والخيوط العرضية القماش يتشكل هكذا هذا اسمه السدى وهذا اسمه اللحمة هل هنالك قماش بسدى دون لحمة أو بلحمة دون سدى كذلك شخصية المسلم تتشكل من الكتاب ومن سنة الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام 
فهما صنوان عنها لا يفترقان صنوان يعني شيئان متلازمان <تصفيق> إنها شخصية جادة متربية على منهاج دقيق لا ينخرم قيد أنملة لا ينخرم قيد أنملة يعني لا خلل فيه ولو في أقل شيء يسير كيف وهو دين الله رب العالمين دين الله الذي أنزله الله على قلب رسوله فيه الكمال وفيه الهدى وفيه أسباب السعادة كلها قال وما كتبته فيما مضى علم هو طريق للعمل العلم طريق العمل عمل بغير علم يفيد علم بغير عمل وبال على صاحبه وذكرى هي وسيلة للاقتداء فذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين ونصيحة هي واسطة عقد الانتفاع إذا وجدت النصيحة في الأمة كان الخير كله لأن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال الدين النصيحة فلا انتفاع بحق إلا بوجود النصيحة فالله أسأل التوفيق لي وللمسلمين جميعا وأن يثبتنا على منهاج نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم إنه خير من سئل وأعظم من أجاب وأخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين أسأل الله عز وجل ولكم أيها الإخوة التوفيق والسداد والهدى والرشاد وأن يرزقنا وإياكم حسن الختام والوفاء على الإيمان إنه سبحانه لذلك والقادر عليه ونشكركم على حسن استجابتكم وتعاونكم و استماعكم فهذا ان شاء الله يدل على الحرص على طلب العلم والتواصي بالحق والتواصي بالصبر واسال الله عز وجل ان يهيئ لنا من الفرص غيرها وخيرها يكون في ذلك تمام هذا التناصح وهذا التواصي وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله Uh, the Sheikh said that the topic of the uh, last hadith, the exit or the way out from the trials that the people fall into, uh, the Sheikh said that the uh, comment here is that the way out or the exit from the trials is the example. The example, and that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa following his sunnah is the way out from the trials. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, surely uh, there has been, or uh, in the Prophet of Allah, uh, or the Messenger of Allah, there is a perfect example for those, uh, there is a perfect example for those who hope uh, to meet Allah and the last day and who have hope in Allah and the last day and mention Allah much. Uh, the Sheikh said yes, the uh, following Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the greatest way out of the turmoils or the trials that are surrounding us and it is the uh, greatest light that will guide us in the uh, darknesses uh, that are surrounding us or that, are, uh, that we are immersed into uh, or the <coughs> darknesses that are shocking us. The Sheikh said, uh, taking the example of the Prophet Sallallahu will take us out from the darknesses to the light. Uh, so by knowing the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the ornaments that have no benefit in it, that there is no value to it, they will, they will be uh, unveiled. They will be unveiled. And the deficiencies or the flaws will be also exposed and also uh, matters will go back to their rightful uh, places and things that are hidden, it, they will become uh, clear. They will become clear. Uh, the Sheikh said that if matters are put in the rightful place, then the Ummah will be in a good condition. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if the matters are given uh, to those who are not deserving of them or if the uh, positions are given to those who do not deserve them, then wait for the hour to be established. This means that if matters are in the rightful places, then uh, the ummah will be, will be uh, 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 in a good condition. 
the sheikh said uh, that uh, things will go back to rightful to their rightful places so there will be no room for one who claims to be knowledgeable while he isn't and there is no place for uh, someone who is an envier and there, there will be no place for someone who will dare to uh, uh, spread or to be upon uh, falsehood and there is also no place for someone who sounds to be eloquent while he is uh, free from following the true religion for the sunnah is a light that guides so the one who knows it he will achieve a lot of good and the one who is ignorant of it he will have within him a lot of evil so uh, uh, I uh, uh, counsel you, uh, O servant of Allah, to learn and to act and to uh, fear Allah so that you may attain His mercy. As for the uh, conclusion, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the good ending. Uh, we say that the Islamic personality is a, dis is a distinct personality. Uh, the threads, the threads of its fabric are the book and the sunnah. The threads of its fabric. The fabric has horizontal threads and vertical threads. So uh, without those threads vertically and horizontally, there is no fabric. So the Islamic personality, the threads of its fabric are the book and the sunnah. So the book and the sunnah, they are two things that go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. They are inseparable. So the Islamic personality is a serious personality. It is raised upon a very uh, specific or very exact methodology. A methodology that has no deficiency at all. How would it have a deficiency when it is the religion of, the, uh, of Allah, the Lord, uh, of the world, subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Sheikh said, what I have written in what has passed, there is in it knowledge. Knowledge that is uh, actually a way to action. For uh, knowledge leads to action and action, uh, righteous action will lead to be more knowledgeable. So, uh, it is knowledge that leads to action. It is also a reminder, a reminder that will make the people follow the example. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remind for reminder prophets, the believers. It is also a nasiha, an advice. And the advice then uh, will benefit the uh, people. Uh, the Shaykh said uh, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about a nasiha, that the religion is the sincere advice. Or religion is sincere advice. So if there continues to be <coughs> advice, then the uh, people will be in a good condition. Then he said, I ask Allah uh, for myself and for the Muslims facilitation from Allah and to make us firm upon the methodology of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the best of those who are asked and he is Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the greatest of those who respond and uh, with this we come to the end of the book. The Shaykh at the end made uh, dua for all of us and uh, he thanked everybody for uh, paying attention and listening uh, which shows that you are inshallah uh, wanting and interested in seeking uh, knowledge and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate uh, for us uh, other sittings uh, of benefits and more visits where we can benefit from these sittings uh, of knowledge and uh, we say also to the Shaykh that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for uh, coming and uh, you know answering our uh, invitation and coming here and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate for him to visit us uh, to visit us more often and Jazakallah khairan all of you for attending and uh, uh, those also who are watching on the uh, live stream on the uh, website may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward uh, all and we hope to meet again and again in sittings like this and inshallah uh, yani, uh, from the aspect of uh, inshallah giving you hope yani, or more hope uh, about uh, scholars who will be coming 
there will be others inshallah that we expect uh, amongst the scholars to come and visit amongst them is the Sheikh Abu Anas uh, Muhammad Musa Nasr Hafidhullah um, as we agreed that he will visit us again inshallah probably sometime in the summer uh, also uh, the Sheikh uh, Wasillah Abbas uh, he's a scholar from originally from India but he resides in Arabia in Mecca he's one of the teachers in the Haram in Mecca inshallah he also agreed to come and visit us it will be around uh, July inshallah we're not sure yet when in July but we are hoping uh, that he will come another Sheikh that we hope uh, dearly that he will be coming to visit us. It will be the first time in North America, and that is the Sheikh Mashur Ibn Hassan Al Salman, Hafizullah. He also agreed to come here and visit us, and we are hoping that uh, this will uh, come true, in Allah Ta'ala, but we need to be, uh, inshallah, we need to follow up on this, and inshallah, uh, we hope uh, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will facilitate for us uh, those scholars and more uh, others to visit us here. And um, inshallah, all of us should make dua that these things will materialize. And Jazakumullah uh, khairan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakumullah khairan.